Welcome back, Shalloners. Well, today we've got happy news for Levatics. Is that how you say Demi Lovato? Levatics? You all gotta go back to the drawing board with that. Demi Lovato is engaged to Max Erich. I'm gonna say his name super German, Erich. I don't know what it means, but it's the only interesting thing about him is that his name is super German or something. I have thoughts on this relationship and spoiler alert, not a lot of them are good. We're gonna break down um, some red flags I see with this relationship, even though I love Demi. I mean, sort of, she's such a mess. She's such a mess like Selena Gomez, but at least Demi is super talented, right? And that's all I ask. If you're gonna be a mess, be a talented one. That's me, right? <laughs> so I expect the same level of mess talent quotient. We're gonna break down their relationship and more importantly, we're gonna talk about what we can learn. When it comes to marriage and engagement, how do you know when the time is right? How do you know when the time is wrong? I'm gonna break down the two or three definite signs that you should not be taking that next step in commitment. And in my experience, the number one sign that things are green lights all the way and you're good to go on leveling up in terms of commitment. But first, just wanna remind you guys to follow me on Instagram. You suggested this topic. I love it when you do. We voted on it and you're like, yes, this is perfect. You also weighed in on your thoughts on Max and Demi and your sentiments echoed mine. Happy for you, girl, but Something seems fishy, but we'll get to that. Also, follow me on InfStream. It's a saucy new platform that's ad-free. No regulations about what we can talk about. So we can talk about things that are a little bit saucier. I've got some hookup tutorials on there. We're going to be escalating that in terms of sauciness. I literally can't even say the terms because YouTube will demonetize this video if I say, like, terms. It, it, the whole thing is so annoying. But go over there. We're going to talk girl talk and, and get a little bit nasty with it. Like... PG-13 nasty. So let's talk about Max and Demi. So yay, our girl's engaged. <laughs> she said yes, bride, bride tribe. <laughs> oh God. Hmm. Let's talk about who the fuck this dude is because a lot of us are like, wait, who, what? We talked about Demi and Max a few months ago when quarantine first started because just as Wilmer Valderrama, the eternal playboy, patient zero for Hollywood gonorrhea, got engaged and decided to settle down, and that he was like Demi's big, big, big ex, I'm sure a huge hurt locker for her, Demi suddenly, suddenly had this very serious boyfriend. It was all over her Instagram, and suddenly sources were telling us weekly, they're like, we wouldn't be surprised if there's an engagement around the corner, they're so in love, everything's super serious. Who could that source have been? Spoiler alert, it's Demi. You guys know I used to run a celebrity magazine. I used to be the editor-in-chief of Star Magazine. I know who sources are. And 90, not 90% of the time, but a lot, a good chunk of time, when you have a story that like that, that's like very positive in terms of one celebrity, and especially when there just happens to be news from the celebrity's ex or the celebrity's nemesis or something, the source is the celebrity. It's their publicist. Like, I don't think Demi Lovato was on the phone with Travis Cronin. Awesome. Over there, the whole staff over there is awesome. I miss them and love them. Um, I don't think, like, she was on there, but, oh, here, here's a nice, here's a few quotes for you. Come on, girl. But Max seems like quite the man with the agenda as well. Something you guys pointed out to me, which I didn't know, is that Max had what seemed to be a very strange obsession with Selena Gomez as recently as last year. Apparently there's tons of tweets from talking about he wants to marry, I'm obsessed with her, I love her, and followed like 25 Selena Stan accounts on Twitter or Instagram. And it's like, okay, first of all, where do we even begin to unpack this? Adult men, he's 29, shouldn't be following like celebrity Stan account. Teenage men don't do this. Teenage boys don't do this. It's weird for guys to obsess about female celebrities, but it's not weird for us to do it. Like it's it's just a girl thing. I don't know. We just, I think we have so much extra emotion that society doesn't allow us to like properly vent and release that we like channel our obsession and our passions into celebrities. You know, it's fun. We're, we're all kind of teeny boppers at heart, but when guys do it, homeboy's 29 years old. Like that's weird. That is, Weird, weird, weird. You know, I think it's weird to have a crush on Selena Gomez to begin with, but that's neither here nor there. But I think it's interesting that he went from obsessing over Selena to ostensibly marrying her nemesis, Demi Lovato, in like a year. Huh. 
So, Detective Blondie over here did a little research. These two, I, I had no idea their romance was as new as it was. The timeline of their relationship is incredibly fishy and incredibly red flaggy. They were like rumored to be heating up in March. March of this year, March of 2020, not like March 2017. March of this year after exchanging flirty messages on social media. That tells me he was probably in her DMs. Now let's, let me tell, let me tell you guys a truth. If a dude slides into your DMs who you've never met, he is not only sliding into one. Do you guys remember the band Gym Class Heroes? I'm friends with Travis McCoy. I used to be like back in the day. And he's, this was in kind of like the MySpace days. And he would meet girls on MySpace. And I was like, you just like picked her out of nowhere to like DM? He's like, Shallon, no. I send like 30 at a time. It's like fishing. You throw a billion lines in the water and you see who gets a bite and you reel that one in. The rest, you cut the line, you let it go. And I was like, oh my God. I was like, do all boys do this? He's like, yes, yes. He's like, if you get a DM from a dude, he's in a million other inboxes and you're just the idiot who took the bait. I was like, oh my Lord. The updated version of this, if you're on dating apps, is like guys swipe yes on every girl, every girl, because they know that women are far more judicious about who we swipe yes on. So when they get a match, they know, okay, she's actually interested in me. So it's like when a, when you match with the guy, it's not like, oh, yay, he liked me. It's like, girl, he was swiping yes on everyone. That's why you have to let them reach out because if they actually are interested in you, they'll show it. But that's a tale for another video. I have a whole playlist on um, dating apps, so check that out. But yeah, so I'm inclined to believe that this dude was maybe like mass DMing other people or maybe his manager went after Demi. But let's just say, let's err on the side of optimism for once here in the Chalantourage. Let's say that no, He's always loved her because she called out some like thirsty tweets he made about her. Like, all I want for Christmas is Demi Lovato. Like at some point, again, dude, what are you just like talking about every girl in that like age category? Like every ex Disney star, all I want for, you know, Christmas is Zendaya, Victoria Justice, Bella Thorne, <laughs> Demi Lovato, Selena Gomez, either one of the Sprouse twins. Like where is the bottom here? So I get the feeling he's a bit of a social climber. He's a soap opera star, and I don't know any soap opera star who's fine with just being a soap opera star. That is like a layover to celebrity status that they are like dying for, you know? A soap job can be a really lucrative gig, you know, you got a lot of fans, whatever. But the pathology of someone who becomes an actor to begin with, they are a bottomless need of neuroses and ego needs. One of my friends, she's an actress and she only dates actors and she wonders why every single relationship crashes and burns. I'm like, that's because you only date actors and they're fucking crazy. They're crazy. They're so self-absorbed. They are so neurotic. Like healthy people don't become actors. Healthy people don't do that. You know, they, they, there's, I don't know. It's like how many t-ball games does your dad have to miss for you to turn out this way, dude? But here we are. But again, let's say that he just loves Demi, loves Demi and everything's normal and everything. No red flags, no weird Selena Stan accounts. They still only started talking in March. March the third. That's four months, four, let's say five months ago on the outside. Five months. And you feel like you know someone enough to spend the rest of your life with them? Forget the rest of your life. Let's say on the outside, the outside, your marriage is gonna last five years. You're going to commingle your finances with someone for five years? This is what marriage is. It's a contract with the government. Yes, it's a covenant with God. It's a pact you make with all your friends and stand up in front of Jesus. It's also a contract with the government. And you need a judge to let you out of it. That's fucking crazy to me. That's crazy to me. And it's always interesting to me when people who are hardcore Republicans who are like, you know, less government, smaller government are very traditional like you marriage is you got to be married to have a baby i'm like marriage is the government bro like you what like these things don't add up you want less government but you want more marriage huh it's just wild to me it's wild anyway i'm worried about demi so not only do these people not know each other what do we always say around here dating isn't 50 50 it's 100 100 and you can't be half of a whole if you don't know which half you are and let's see what Demi's been doing in the last few years. Drugs, 
That's what she's been doing. A shit ton of drugs. She's overdosed. She's gone to rehab. She's been in 12 step programs. She's talked about it nonstop. And this isn't just in the last few years. This has been her extensive history, right? She's gone. She talked about after she left the Met Gala and went to an AA meeting. I've heard that's not true at all. She, she went to the opposite of an AA meeting. Let's just say that. But when you're going through these programs, the number one thing they tell you, no relationships, girl, no relationships for a year. You don't know what half you are. You need to rediscover yourself and you can't swap one drug for another. Not all drugs come in a bottle or a tiny little plastic bag or whatever meth comes in. I, I don't know, a cardboard box, I, a wheelbarrow, I have no idea. They can come in a human man form. They can come in a casino. They can come in a store. They can come in sex. They can come on a plate, right? And until you get clear about what is fueling that need for an emotional anesthesia, and it's probably real deep and painful. It's that psychological splinter we talk about. Until you get clear on that, you are in danger of just substituting a new anesthesia in. Because that's what pain does to us. We want to not be in pain. And the way to not be in pain, you know, when you're physically hurt, yes, it's anesthesia. But more than that, if you have a physical wound, you don't just want to keep covering it up with morphine. You want to fix the wound. You got to stitch it up. You got to set that broken bone. You got to get those antibiotics. You got to really heal it from the inside out, not just keep anesthetizing yourself. And emotionally, it is the exact same way, if not worse, because your body will heal on its own. It takes over for you. Your emotions don't. You have to do that work and it sucks. It sucks so bad, but it sucks a lot less than getting engaged to a dude and then getting divorced. Believe me, I know. I have been married and oh, I wish I had done so many things differently. He was and is and will always be the most wonderful person incredible, amazing person. I don't know that we were incredible, amazing people for each other, but one thing I do know is that we needed more time to find out. And we didn't rush into a marriage. We were dating for three years, living together for two, before we got engaged. And wait, can we just talk about Demi's ring real quick? I fucking hate this ring. I hate this ring. It looks like the Dynasty garage sale clearance rack. I hate it. It's so big and gaudy. It's so unflattering on her finger and it is so very obvious that she bought it herself. He doesn't have this kind of money. This thing's valued at like two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars. Like, give me a fucking break. Like, what are you trying to prove? Anyway, I hate it. Sometimes, like, bigger isn't better. For penises, yes, of course. No, actually, they're they're not either. They're not either. For like trucks, yes, bigger <laughs> bigger is better. But rings, like, no, it's bougie and gross. It's gross, and it's like ostentatious. But let's go back to the red flags of getting engaged. When I look back on my situation, I wanted to get engaged, but I didn't want to get married. And what is that? And a lot of people interpret that as, oh, you just wanted to be a bride and you wanted to feel special. No, being a bride was incredibly stressful. What I wanted with the engagement is, a, is like a, a metric, like an absolute certainty that he had skin in the game with me too. We have all dated someone and thought we were on the same page with them. And it turns out we weren't. We thought we were going in one direction and they were going in the other. We were looking for entrances and they were looking for exits. And I had no reason to think that that was the case with my ex-husband and I. No, no intuition ping, nothing that told me he's not on the same page as me. But it was the ghost of my past that was haunting me. It was those fear-based decisions. It was that crazy snooky voice and not the deep, calm Oprah voice of intuition that was driving me. And I got engagement fever. We need to be getting engaged. Me, 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 me. I, I mean, I wasn't like saying that, but I, well, no, I did, I did say that. I'm, ugh, I did. Because I wanted some sort of guarantee. There are no guarantees with love. You know, we think we get a ring on that finger, we get that marriage certificate, we are insulated from pain. We locked him down with a baby, we moved in together. Nothing is gonna come after me emotionally. That's not true, baby girl. Men have split the Catholic two in church. They have split England itself. They have started wars. They have abdicated thrones for women to get to them or to get away from them. 
A man will get away from you if he wants to. There is no ring that is a force field from pain. And that's, that's the sucky part. We're humans. We want stability. We want guarantees. We don't like a lot of unknowns. It's a survival mechanism, right? And we certainly don't want emotional unknowns because we don't know that if someone breaks our heart, we're going to survive it. You will. You will. Broken heart doesn't kill you. It's how you handle the broken heart. It's whether or not you choose to learn from it. It's whether or not you watch these videos, right? So looking back, yeah, at my own situation, I wanted that assurance that we were on the same page. And once I got engaged, I was so happy that I was like, oh, we're partners. Like, this is real. And I really didn't need to take that step of getting married. But this is the thing about getting engaged. That train leaves the station real quick, real quick. When I was younger, when I was like in college and I, I was watching girls get engaged and I was like, Ugh. they're only getting engaged to give them purpose in their life. So that they are 23 and they're graduating and no one's gonna be like, so what are you doing with your life? They can be like, I'm engaged. <laughs> I want, I'm engaged. I'm making like rice, like mason jars, lights in them. I'm engaged, right? It gave them purpose. It gave them a sense of identity so that they didn't have to do that deep emotional work of, no, 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 what is my place in this world? Am I living in the city that's fulfilling to me? Do I have a career that's fulfilling? Am I making friends? Or am I just like panic marrying someone to give me some sort of anchor in terms of identity? And I was like, that is not gonna be me. And I thought, you know, when you get engaged, that year should be the year you get into therapy. You have hard conversations with each other. That's, it's not about like planning the wedding and picking the cake and all that bullshit. Like, fuck that shit. This is the time you do real work on your relationship. <laughs> and yeah, it should be. But it wasn't. It wasn't for me. Or we tried to do that. We did do counseling. But you have a very finite amount of time to make a wedding happen. And... I, I was the only bride I knew who was working full time, planning it entirely herself. And we were paying for the wedding ourselves. I mean, mostly like we're adults, like we don't need our parents' money. We make plenty of money, but that was a lot. And it consumed all of my time, all of my thoughts, all of my energy. And I began to get very, very resentful at my fiance that I didn't feel like he had enough. He was pulling his weight in terms of planning. I have since refined that. I don't know. That's, that was my perception, right? Okay, that was my perception. Why am I getting so red? Oh, it's raining. It's so hot in here. I'm sorry. But I turn off the AC for you guys so that, you know, you don't hear it. And so I didn't have that emotional bandwidth to also do work on a relationship. I was literally stressing about the chairs and what chairs we were going to order. Because if we, if I didn't order the chairs, there would be no fucking chairs right? If I didn't pick the napkin rings, we didn't have any goddamn napkin rings. No one else is picking up the slack for me. And an engagement will illuminate a lot of stressors in your relationship, but it'll also illuminate a lot of the really good things about your relationship, how you come together, how you communicate. And things started, things started to break down for us at that point. And it's not like the movies where it's like, we're, we're calling it off. We're postponing. It's not like that. I'm friends with one of Kim Kardashian's good friends. And after my marriage collapsed, I went out with him. And I think I've told you guys this story before. And I was telling him that like how I felt. It's like I felt like I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't slow things down. Like the, the venue had been picked out and money had been put down and, and, and people had held the date and people were, were, they bought tickets and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, that's exactly how Kim felt with Chris Humphreys. Exactly. She didn't not love him. She did not want to marry him, but she just needed more time. She needed that engagement to be a time to really get to know each other and to work out things in their relationship. And it just, it was all happening so fast. And it's funny, like we forget celebs, they're like us. I mean, their problems are ours, but they're like magnified. And we think that that makes their problems easier to solve. And they make, it actually makes them harder. You know, she's like, no, no, no. The money we put down is $1.2 million, not 30,000 or whatever it was. And she didn't know what to do. She didn't know how to stop that train. And that's how I felt too. It's like, I, I loved my husband. I love him still. I'll love him forever. He's a magical person. But because I was listening to that Snooky brain and we need to be engaged, it ruined our relationship. It ruined it. Here's what I should have done differently. And here are the signs 
that your relationship is not ready to ascend to the next level. What I've realized, the number one red flag is that you are afraid to have certain conversations. Whether it's about your past, about his family, about sexual dysfunction, about finances. Finances and sex are the number one and two things married people argue about. If you're afraid to have these conversations now, you should not be getting married because that means you're not truly partners. Think of a business partnership, right? Say you guys ran an ice cream stand or something together. You had an ice cream store. If you were afraid to talk to your business partner about ordering spoons, your business wouldn't function well. I can't, I can't bring it up to Hannah about the spoon. So I don't know. We just don't have any spoons. I'm sorry. Eat it with your hands. Sorry. No one would keep coming to your fucking ice cream shop. They have to eat it with their hands, right? We acknowledge this in business. But we don't look at the emotional ice cream shop of our relationships. Hey, I'm afraid to talk to him about money. And yet we're thinking about moving in together. We're talking about having a baby, but I don't know how much money he makes. He doesn't know how much credit card debt I have. I don't know his credit score. Love is logistics. It is logistics. My friend Becca said one time, she's like, actual love doesn't really count for much. It gets you in the door, but it's maybe 15 or 20% of a viable, healthy relationship in marriage. And it is true. It is true. That chemistry blunts the edges of life. It sort of turns like a sharp corner into a circle. But that object is still there. And it makes you more elastic and more amenable to hearing someone out. And okay, oh, your credit score is 200. You have $45,000 in credit card. Okay. But it, it doesn't fix everything. Love is not enough by like 80%. So if you're not having these conversations, you are not forming a partnership. You don't have an ice cream store. And that's not going to change once you get married. Dr. Phil once said, and I didn't really understand what this meant at the time, but after I got engaged or was in a long-term relationship, I got it. So hopefully you guys are smarter than me. He said, when you get married, everything changes and yet nothing changes. Because everything changes in that your problems, those wet towels on the floor are the wet towels you're going to look at for the next 35 years. And if they drive you crazy now, they're going to drive you absolutely insane a few months down the line, unless you work out why they drive you insane. Unless you get to the bottom of like, hey, I need you to do some more like physical labor around this house and clean up after yourself. I'm not your mom. If it's indicative of a parent-child relationship, stuff like that. So the stakes are larger, right? You have bought in to whatever this person is selling, lock, stock, and barrel. But nothing changes. When you get married, all of your problems and disagreements don't just evaporate. And that's what I thought was going to happen. I had expressed a lot of concern to my friends, a lot of panic when I was engaged. And everyone told me the same thing. You're just stressed. This is cold feet. Being engaged is awful. My best friend, she was, she was my maid of honor. She's like, being engaged was awful, but being married is awesome. You don't realize how many stressors there are on you when you're a bride. Everyone thinks just champagne, bride, bride tribe. And it's not. There's a shit ton of stuff to deal with. Family issues. You know, just money. Things that you, ha again, have not previously talked about or have not yet come to the surface. And now, boom, here they are having to be dealt with. And I believed her. I believed everyone who said that because I wanted to believe it. And in a large portion, it was, it, that was true. That was true. But you cross some sort of Rubicon. There's a tipping point where external stressors get inside the house and resentment builds up and communication falters. And there's kind of a point of no return. And unfortunately, I believe that's what happened to us. And I blame myself almost entirely for this. Almost entirely. Anyway. <clears throat> so look at your relationship now. If this snapshot of what it is continues, will this be okay with you in five years? Because guess what, girl? This will continue. The best predictor of future behavior is past behavior. If he doesn't help out with the housework, if he doesn't take you on thoughtful dates, if he says he doesn't want kids, guess the fuck what? That's going to keep on going. That's not going to change because suddenly you're married. If anything, all of those things you want to upgrade are going to downgrade. Guys do this. I mean, girls do this too. They let themselves go in some ways. I've heard that women do it like physically and men will do it like emotionally. It's like, oh, I don't, I don't need to try anymore. I got her. I got her. I don't need to plan dates. I don't need to go down on her. I don't need to really, you know, have two eyebrows anymore. 
doesn't matter. She's my wife. What's she going to do? Leave? Yeah, dude. Women leave all the fucking time. All the time. Right? <sighs> and you should leave if he doesn't want to have two eyebrows. You should. You deserve better. You deserve better. You deserve two of these. So look at this snapshot. You cannot date potential. You can't date potential. And you also can't date nostalgia. Well, it's bad now, but it was so good. And I know we just need to get married or get engaged. And, and then I'm going to feel more com comfortable in the relationship. And then we're going to be back to a good place. No. Sometimes people only have six good months in them. Or six good years. Or six good hours. Or six good seconds. And that's it. And we cannot forecast what we want to see in the future based on what we saw a little bit of in the past. But if we're being objective about how long that, that good part lasted, maybe it was only 10% of the time you've actually been together. Haven't we all mourned a guy for like three months when we had a two, three week wonderful relationship with him? I have. And it's like, Look at how much time I've spent miserable compared to how much time I was happy. And I keep trying to get back there, but it's not, the metrics don't work out. So look at that snapshot. Here's another big red flag, okay? When I get married, I will no longer be bleh. What is the end of that sentence for you? Is this person an emotional getaway car? Are they an anesthesia? When I get married, I'm no longer going to feel like my life has no purpose. When I get married, my parents are going to leave me alone about settling down. And they're finally going to be happy. And they're never going to ask me for anything again. And they're going to love me. When I get married, I'm no longer going to feel inferior to my friends. I'm going to feel okay about my body because I have a husband. He's got to fuck me no matter what. When I finally get married, it doesn't matter that I quit law school. He's going to pay for everything. Be honest with yourself. The psyche must be heard. And like I always say, she'll do it the hard way. She'll do it the easy way. She'll do it the easy way. She'll tell you, that's not true. Don't do this. Or, ah, my parents will love me. Okay, great. Get married to that dude they picked out who you don't really have any chemistry with at all. Then they're going to come up with a new thing you need to do. Have a baby. Buy a house. Blah, blah, blah. It's never going to end. Things like this never end. And if we think that this one person, this one event is going to fix everything that ails us, it won't. He's not a solution. He's a person. And he's got a whole bunch of complexities on his end as well. Would you like it if he's like, if only I can marry Shallon, I'm never going to have to worry about my career again because she's so driven. She's just going to inspire me forever and just like lead the ship. I, no, excuse me. <laughs> excuse me. No, no. You're actually not just going to sit home and game all day because you're dating me, a successful YouTuber. Like I'm not going to be your touchstone of ambition and sanity. You need to also be like your own complete person. You know, like we don't want that burden on ourselves. Ugh, when I finally marry Shallon, my parents are going to get off my back. And so she can just deal with them forever. Also not happening. Also not happening. Hard pass on that. Hard pass. But what are the good signs, right? Because we always talk about what's bad. What are the green flags that your relationship is healthy? It is on track. And okay, it's, it's, it's good to take that next step. What I've seen is that you don't feel like you need to take that next step. If it happens, it happens. I'm happy where we are though. I like the snapshot of where we are. I don't feel like applying this arbitrary label, having this whole big wedding to prove our love to each other. If it happens, it happens. If not, it doesn't. It's about how we feel and it's about how we communicate. It is not about how it looks. And if we do get married, backyard wedding's fine. I have a theory that the more elaborate the wedding, the worse the relationship is. People who like elope, get married at a courthouse, I'm like, you guys, you guys are here for each other. You're here for the right reasons. You're not here for, I feel like a princess. I'm a princess. Like, yeah, I, I feel like a princess on my wedding day, but like I get dressed up a lot. I get my makeup done a lot. I've worn a million gowns. I've worn a lot of expensive jewelry. It wasn't the only time in my life I'm going to feel special, but it is for a lot of people. Okay, all right, girl. You can have those feelings of specialness in micro doses throughout your life instead of one big day where now you're in a government contract to this fucking putz over here, this dude Max, right? Poor Demi. 
Look how to incorporate that specialness. If you don't feel special because you live in a small town and you work a dead end job, get the fuck out of your small town. Go back to school, have some goals, level yourself up. Give that feeling to yourself. Wed yourself. Be your own internal bride. You know, like sometimes I'm like, oh, I want to be a bride again. I want to get married again. You know what I do? I go out and buy myself a piece of cake and I put on a really fancy dress and I pop some champagne and I have cake and champagne and dresses and whatever for dinner. And I'm like, hmm, I feel special. I feel fancy. I feel indulgent, right? I feel silly and indulgent. And it kind of like checks that box. I'm like, oh, okay. You may leave my house now, boy. Just please go. I'm so much more independent. And when I look back again at my relationship, I was using that, I was funneling everything I had and was and my identity into that relationship because I wasn't focusing on my career. On paper, my career was moving. I was getting promoted at Star. I was doing, you know, well in that sector, but I wasn't doing what was truly authentic to me. I wasn't self-actualized. I wasn't doing this. And once I started doing this, once I really committed to this, all my relationships changed. I want you, but I don't need you. I love you, but I don't actually like you right now, so you may go. I took no more shit because I was now my own bride. I was Queen Elizabeth. I was married to England. <laughs> you know, I was married to myself. And it made me like kind of a monster. I mean, in a good way, it made me a savage. Because anyone who's in my life, like you are a guest here and you, you better act accordingly. You are a guest in my heart and I will expel you at any point. I reserve the right to refuse service to any bitch ass man who tries it. I don't need you. Want versus need. Feelings versus optics. So look at your relationship. If you're like, I love him, things are good, I'm willing to work on things, but I acknowledge that if we get married, it's not going to be this magic wand that's waved and everything bad is no longer bad and everything good is now the absolute majority. Be a little bit cognizant of things. Personally, I... I was always so surprised when gays wanted the right to marry. I mean, of course they should have, of course, like you should have the right to marry whoever you want. It's so bizarre, marry whatever. But I was like, you, you want this really? Do straight people seem happy to you? This seems, this is a headache and a half. Like you guys have it perfectly made, perfectly made. You can have a domestic partnership, get those insurance benefits, get those hospital benefits. Of course, yes. But dude, don't get in a contract with the government like this. Oh, can you hear the thunder? But I like I wish we could have instead of giving gays the right to marry, I wish we could have rolled back marriage rights or everyone else. Like, since they can't marry, none of y'all can marry. We're all just gonna be domestic partners. A big, big tip I have: don't get legally married. Have a wedding. Have a if you want a wedding, girl, have your wedding. Get your dress, eat that cake. It's awesome. Get a ring. But, and, and, and say your vows, you know, say your vows in front of God and your friends and make that kind of covenant. Don't involve the government. And then, and you also don't have to tell anyone. You don't have to tell anyone. This is your business between you and Jesus, literally. And then like two years, five years down the line, if you're like, you know what, we're ready to make this a legal thing. Renew your vows in the Bahamas or something. Make it legal. It's no one's business but your own. It doesn't make you cooler to be married. It doesn't make you valid or worthy or on track or give your life purpose. It just puts you in a contract with the government. And it puts you in the contract with your husband. You have bought into every single aspect of him until you take very serious steps to get out of it. So what's the rush? If you really think that you can be with someone for the rest of your life, What's six months, a year, two years, five years in either direction? What's the rush? We're going to live to like 95. Who cares if you get married when you're 25 or 28? Those three years could make all the difference in terms of interpersonal development, development with your partner, being confident enough to have those hard conversations, developing your own path, going to vet school if you want to, moving to Barcelona, living your life for you and being the 100 you need to be, being the half of a whole that you deserve to be and you have to be in order to create that valuable and solid partnership. I wish Demi luck. I don't think it's going to work out though, but I, uh, girl, get a prenup. All I got to say get a prenup and get that ring insured because you will 100% try to take it and pawn it. Anyway, for more, click like and subscribe. We're going to be doing some other videos this week. I mean, 
we're gonna be doing videos every week this is my job i have nothing else to do so uh, let me know what else you guys want to see let me know your thoughts on dating and marriage would you get have a wedding and not get legally married what do you think about that would you be a domestic partner with someone do you think that that's as far as you need to go and tell me actually your favorite celebrity wedding ring i love wedding rings right who does the secret fingers for i'll talk to you later shalloners bye